Hello, and welcome to my Let's Play of Front Mission 5, Scars of the War. In this first video, we'll just be watching the introductory video to the game. その島はハフマン島 So, uh, the introduction there basically explained that an island uh, called Huffman Island has appeared in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and its uh, rich resources have been exploited by uh, both uh, Asian and American uh, super states. And I, I think these these characters have some serious uncanny valley going on, but uh, these are the three main characters of the game that we see here.第一次ハフマン紛争と名付けられた領土圏に起因する戦闘は2年続き、ハフマン島は欧州と USNに二分する国境線が引かれた。紛争による傷跡を持つ世代は成長し、情勢がそれに拍車をかけてその後も各地では
And then uh, finally, it was remade a third time for the Nintendo DS as Front Mission, uh, which is the definitive version of that game. And I encourage anyone who is interested in uh, the first Front Mission game to certainly play the DS version because it is uh, really excellent and superior to the previous two versions. Um, first, because it uh, includes the uh, added campaign, the USN campaign from the PlayStation version without suffering the load times that you get on a disc-based system like the PlayStation 1. Um, and it also uh, includes some further extras, some of which are kind of trivial, like being able to use giant mobile weapons in the game, um, and some of which are more substantial, such as various additions to the storyline, uh, which tie it in better with the storyline of Front Mission 5. Um, so, as you may have surmised in this kind of discussion, Front Mission, the Front Mission series is very sort of world building and historically oriented. Um, and Front Mission 5 is a game that spans the entirety of the uh, Front Mission timeline. Well, I would say the vast majority of the Front Mission timeline. Um, it starts with Front Mission 1 and it goes all the way up to uh, the beginning of Front Mission 3, which is chronologically the last game in the series. Uh, the order of the games, well, I'll talk about that a little bit more later on um, as we progress through the storyline. Uh, so, one final thing I wanted to note in this first video is that uh, you may notice that the graphics quality is not so great here. Um, I actually uh, have it set to the native uh, PS2 resolution um, with the uh, uh, normal size textures. Um, and the reason for that is if we set the game um, to hardware rendering and upscale it, uh, the intro cinematic doesn't display properly. However, for the rest of the game, I could uh, enable hardware um, acceleration and, uh, you know, upscaling. And from what I have been able to see in the testing, it doesn't cause any significant problems with the gameplay. Uh, the upside is that everything looks very much cleaner. Um, and the downside is that some of the effects that were used um, in order to make the game look a little bit less aliased um, on the original PlayStation 2 version uh, do look a little bit strange when the game is upscaled. Uh, mainly, it causes a bit of ghosting, and there's some depth of field effects that are used that uh, do look a little bit out of place um, with a very clear, crisp... Um, high resolution uh, output of the game. So I leave that up to you guys um, and girls to decide uh, whether you would like uh, to see the game in its original resolution um, or if you would like to see it upscaled through these videos. Um, and I will be putting a poll up for that in the intro post so please uh, go there and vote. Uh, the um, one thing I would like to mention, though, is that neither option is that great. Because, um, you know, I, I am running this game at 720p, 60 frames per second, and that's nice. Uh, but no matter which option we choose, there are problems. If we choose the... Uh, lower resolution software rendered uh, option, then we are going to have a problem in that uh, the aliasing looks really bad on the PC. Um, it's just, it's far more prominent than it is on a television. Um, certainly what you would see on a CRT monitor, uh, but also what you would see on a um, flat screen television. It, do, it doesn't look as good on the on the uh, PC as it does on either of those options. 
Um, and so I would say I'm partial to using hardware acceleration um, and getting that very uh, crisp look with a minimum of aliasing. Um, but I do leave that up to you to decide. Uh, then finally, um, I would just like to say a couple things about myself and why I'm doing this Let's Play. So you may remember me from my Let's Play of uh, Final Fantasy Tactics Rebirth. Um, I completed that last year and I, I will be going on a slightly slower schedule for this Let's Play because I, uh, you know, I, I don't really have the amount of time that I did uh, for that Let's Play. Um, right now I'm trying to finish my doctorate, so I do have to focus on that. But uh, you'll notice that the game um, titles, or uh, menu options here, are all in English. And the reason for that is that I translated the game um, some number of years ago. I was the lead translator, and I was responsible for translating the vast majority of text in this game. Uh, so you will see um, a whole lot of my work in this game, I'm uh, in this Let's Play, and I'm, I'm sad to say it isn't my best work, because it is the first um, fan translation that I did. I also translated uh, Front Mission 2 for the PlayStation 1, and there is a patch you can go and download from frontmission.info um, that translates some of the game. Uh, but the problem there was that unlike Front Mission 5, some of the text files couldn't be um, hacked and uh, reins we couldn't reinsert the English into the game. Um, so only portions of that game were ever able to be translated. With Front Mission 5, uh, we were able to provide a full fan translation, which is really extensive, um, and provides, uh, you know, close to uh, professional localization level of uh, English support. Um, I'll get a little bit more into some of the limitations we had to deal with in doing that translation. Uh, but the one thing I wanted to mention is that um, I would say the quality of my translation of Front Mission 2 is better than the quality of my translation of Front Mission 5. Uh, that being said, I also was able to work with much longer string limits in Front Mission 2, so I was able to be a little bit more uh, expressive of what I was trying to say and didn't have to spend most of my energy just uh, trying to cram the English text into the very limited uh, strings that were available for us. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's going to be interesting for me to go back and look at my work and see how it holds up after all this time. Um, and uh, I, I do think it, it is a solid translation um, for the most part, and it did get some positive reviews from professionals who work in the industry when this uh, patch was released. So I'm not ashamed to uh, show this to you guys at all. Um, so I guess that's it for the introduction uh, for now. I will uh, shortly be continuing with uh, the kind of tutorial and first base section in the subsequent video, but uh, before I do that I would like to get your feedback as to um, whether you would like the or default uh, texture size or if you would like the um, upscale texture size. I I'm sorry, uh, I, I may have said earlier that uh, the choice was between the default resolution and uh, upscaled and that's not quite right. In either case, I will be running the game at 720p at 60 frames per second. All right. Um, please go and vote, and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of Front Mission 5, Scars of the War.